<clears throat> Salam everyone. Uh, I hope you are all safe and doing well as SQU is going through to the uh, emergency remote learning. I thought of putting this uh, uh, part of the unit of EIA course into the YouTube. So uh, I think if you are aware of what we have done so far until the seventh week, we have finished up to scoping. So this video is about the assessment, the next stage of the EIA process, which has two process, uh, which has two aspects. One is the impact prediction and impact evaluation. So what are, what are we going to do in this uh, short video? We are going to uh, finish prediction and start slightly with the evaluation. Then in the second part, we will complete the evaluation. So before, uh, it's better to recall uh, what we have done uh, in that uh, wonderful seven weeks. And we have started, uh, uh, we started already preparing for the midterm uh, then. Uh, this is what we did. Uh, the, the, the first one, what we did is the, uh, you did a very uh, warm up analysis of sustainability index of different countries. Then we move on to the screening. In the screening uh, has a very critical uh, theoretical component, which is a scientific criteria for screening. So in through your group work assignment, you picked uh, individual projects and you use the scientific criteria to decide whether that project requires EIA or not. If it is required, what level of EIA is required, whether it is comprehensive or uh, preliminary assessment. So the project you have chosen, just to recall, is um, slaughterhouse, dairy production, uh, pharmaceutical industry, uh, small reservoirs, and uh, perfume industry. Um, uh, that, that was a very good experience as a group, and I, I appreciate that you all cooperated and it was a very nice experience for me also. Uh, the core of the whole screening uh, thing is the scientific criteria, uh, which is a very important aspect. Then we move on to sco scoping, and uh, uh, what primarily scoping means is identifying the potential impact of the project, right? But scoping is the place where you, the EIA platform is set. So we saw that there are many other activities involved in scoping process. The, the, the primarily, the first one is the baseline. So baseline has to be studied in any EIA project because at the end of the day, impact assessments are compared uh, with the baseline of that particular site. Right? Then we move on to the uh, other aspect, which is the project boundary. So what is project boundaries? Project boundary uh, uh, is, uh, can be uh, figured out into two. One is spatial boundary. What is the spatial impact of the project? And is the temporal boundary, how long the impact is going to uh, exi exist in the terms of duration of the impact is concerned. So we gave a lot of examples in that uh, particular scenario. And uh, we also look into the stakeholder analysis and we, we, we uh, see the importance of involving stakeholder and if the stakeholders are not informed, what are the problems which the project owner is going to face uh, in the future. And the last aspect of scoping is the project uh, alternative. There's a very important uh, ideological theory of EIA that the project owner has to give alternatives, uh, choices for different things, what he is doing in the name of development. That will give the government a leverage in terms of considering environmentally better alternatives. But th this is what is also a part of scoping. So these are the, the major uh, uh, aspects what we uh, see in the scoping and we started with the second exercise of developing a scoping matrix. And uh, unfortunately, uh, class was suspended. Okay, now 
I brought this uh, six examples. I don't worry about the clarity. The thing is, this was in 2015 batch, which did the scoping matrix based on uh, uh, the two major things, which is uh, the, the, the magnitude of the impact on your this thing and this environmental sensitivity on the other. So you, I think you, you may recall because this is where we spend much of the time in the sixth and seventh week. So to take a closer look at one of them uh, is this on a dam project done by your previous uh, senior students and they have identified from their screening, biodiversity loss, re relocation of people, eutrophication, seismic sensitivity, and they have come up with the matrix and they also end up uh, finishing what you call this the significance, which is the, uh, which is the, uh, the, the second uh, part of this video. Right, so now, uh, what, what basically is the, uh, uh, the, the, the core aspect of impact analysis, as I said, there are two aspects. One is prediction, the other one is the uh, evaluation of the impact. So this particular uh, video is uh, basically on the prediction and we start with the evaluation and uh, we move on to the second presentation uh, uh, part two uh, uh, subsequently to talk about uh, impact um, uh, uh, evaluating impact significance. Okay, now what is prediction? Predict in, this is the part of assessment, the assessment stage of EIA. Prediction is uh, the uh, assessing the severity of the impact. How severe or how, how severe is the damage this impact is going to cause, a particular impact, like for example, water pollution, if you identify that in your, say, a tannery project, in a tannery group, right? Then, once you know the severity, then you have to know, uh, assess the relative importance of that water pollution. So, the, the, there are two terms which are basically used. One is the, the uh, significant, but generally, uh, you can also call this as importance of that impact. So, there is a, uh, the first prediction is about the severity, then how severe it is, is known, then, then you will be trying to see how important it is. You can call for the time being importance, that's fine. Um, so these are the two major, major aspects, which are in terms of assessment, assessment involved in that uh, particular thing. Okay, now prediction involves a joint consideration of these things. What are that? We have already seen in our previous class. Magnitude, extent, and duration. So magnitude is actually what you are likely to consider a few things. One is whether the impact is reversible or irreversible. Take water pollution from tannery into a river, which is your a primary project site impact, uh, which is going to be reversible in terms of if you say it is reversible, then the magnitude is going to be low. It's a kind of general subject you think, but when you really measure it, then parameter by parameter, uh, then it, it will make a lot of uh, uh, sense. And second, second, one is, second example is the rate of recovery. If the impact is going to be uh, uh, recovered very quickly, then the magnitude is less. So normally in uh, EIA project, you see a magnitude described as descriptively as major impact, moderate impact, medium impact, so on and so forth. So the, an example of like what major impact looks like is if your impact cannot be mitigated, right? Then if it is very difficult to mitigate, then the magnitude is very high, okay? And if it is moderate, it means that impact cannot be mitigated, but the resources which is under attack by your project, under damage or polluted by your project, can be still can be used uh, by the public with, with minimal inconvenience. That's kind of a moderate impact. This is what general calculation uh, experts they do. The second aspect you have to consider in prediction, along with magnitude, these all work together, right? In combination, this is called joint consideration. Extent of impact. Extent is what spatial, as I have. As I've told you earlier, what is the impact in terms of space from your project site? Then the third aspect, 
that has to be considered in joint consideration is the duration. What is the time boundary? Whether the impact comes in construction, operation, decommission. Now, if you are, if you are uh, doing your prediction individually for construction, operation, decommissioning of your project, then within that particular phase, what is the time of the impact? For example, construction uh, in a day, for example, if a construction of an industry goes for three years, right? As far as project lifespan is concerned, if the impact identified is noise, will stop after the construction, right? So if your project lifespan is 50 years, it is a three years, then the magnitude is very less. Within construction phase, if you are calculating, then you can consider it between day and night. So most of the construction happens in the daytime and there is no, there is no noise in the night because there is no construction. So basically magnitude uh, in terms of time is only on the day. Time. So this all leads you to evaluate magnitude. That is what is the very important aspect. Now, once that is done, that's the first part is over. The prediction uh, is done. That these are basically is measurable and measured. Now, you have to assign uh, what you call as a relative importance, otherwise called significance, because uh, you should not be confused with the significance again, but ultimately we end up uh, analyzing whether the impact is significant or not. That's significant. So here you can use the term importance. Assessing the relative impo importance of the potential impact you identified in the prediction. So there are two aspects, that's what I said. So the two aspects, one is the prediction, then assessment. Then that assessment, as I said here, is assessing the relative importance of the uh, impact. Okay, so, and now, how do you do this? How do you know whether this particular impact has importance or not? Okay, so we need some criteria. People look for criteria. So the criteria, general criteria, is magnitude uh, with a combination of spatial and temporal aspect, and also whether you know whether it's, it's likely to happen or not. So this is subjective, and this is a combined joint consideration of all these uh, four things. The second criteria is likely degree of recovery of the impact. If the, as I said earlier, then uh, this this is the general criteria should be taken into consideration when you talk about the importance of the impact. Then the value of affected environment, which is very important. If your impact, if your environment is very sensitive, very tolerant, and if there is a, a human habitation closer to your project, then the value of environment will be very high. So there is a heritage site, high. Uh, some biodiversity hotspots in the project site, high. Something like that. So that's a considering the value of an environment. And these are some examples. And the, uh, the fourth is the level of public concern. If the public is very uh, sensitive to certain type of project and they have, they have some issues, then definitely it assumes a lot of importance. And lastly, the gender criteria of what is the scientific evidence um, which has been uh, 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 built up by the institutions, professional bodies on a particular impact, okay? So this is the general criteria. So this will be going into the, to our next part, which is the evaluation of impact significance. That is the part two. I will be posting that separately. Um, uh, by the end of that second part, uh, there is a plan to show you uh, yeah, real proposal submitted uh, to the government by higher water treatment plan when they started their uh, this project. And uh, this has been, uh, this contains, I mean, it's a 300 page document and this has been uh, synthesized by one of our postgraduate students. So I'm, I'm planning to uh, bring that and show it to you how it looks like, how as what assessment is done, so on and so forth. Okay, so our original plan was uh, our uh, MSc students who are currently in environmental management, who is having uh, EIA as one of the unit, are uh, uh, analyzing some of these projects. And uh, our plan, if you remember, they will come and present it to you uh, in your class. Unfortunately, we cannot do this. So uh, we can at least do uh, uh, one synthesis 
already this done by the student, so I will be bringing up as a third video uh, uh, posting after the second one. So it will hope, uh, hopefully all uh, come soon. Uh, if you have any clarification, just mail to me. Uh, I will clarify the thing and you have study material, follow that. So most of the uh, uh, assessment will be on the major criteria of the, sorry, the major aspect of this course, all right? Okay, thank you and hope to see you uh, in the uh, next videos.